program is to discuss the process model and of course for the purpose of helping you with your thing. The process model's got 400 pages or something, nobody has read it all, there's no point in worrying about that. The purpose is not to, to sell you on two concepts or something, but to maybe illustrate that in general, how one can use concepts that already exist to lay next to your thing and then sometimes that helps bring out something you might then want to change the concept or you might that it might really work for you and I have uh, seen that happen and recently you were doing that so I was going to ask you to tell them about it I was saying in there that there is the usual way we understand environment, which is the space around it and somebody else is looking at it. But that there is a sense of environment which is inherently part of every, every event. So that there isn't really a body or a person and then something around it. But you see, it just, it we're born with the lungs, but everybody knows that you don't get to keep those if you don't breathe. So as soon as the child comes out, we do anything we can to let it breathe because otherwise you die. And so lungs without breathing don't exist. So lungs and breathing are one thing. Does that make sense? But breathing is taking in air and putting out stuff, taking, you know, putting out carbon dioxide, this and that, uh, so that, the, the, that it's possible for me to start out by saying, a body is an interaction. That there isn't a thing and another thing and then they meet and say hello and then they interact, which is what the word interact usually suggests. I'm throwing that out and I'm saying, you can start with interaction. There aren't really any bodies. It just looks like that. They decay in a couple days. Uh, there aren't any bodies. There are only interactions. There's breathing, and there's sweating, and there's eating, and there's defecating, and there's walking, all of which involve the environment. So what I meant by that concept of environment, too, is that the organic thing you're talking about is an interaction. And it only looks like, under certain abstract conditions, we take this body out and stick it in alcohol and say, see, that's the body, and over there's the air. But that's not actually how it starts. <clears throat> Does that make sense? So Nada takes that concept and says, oh, <clears throat> that's how I can understand how these aborigines live their land. They walk about, they hear each bird, they respond to each thing, they get some big thing from doing that. Is that, that okay? And and even that there is a connection to a larger thing that, that one is part of if one has that. Go ahead. Well, uh, I was recently in Australia and I observed that I actually taped uh, video of uh, an Aboriginal woman on uh, Aboriginal spirituality. And she was talking about the, the land that they belong to. And they have something really intrinsic in their spirituality where they feel that they are one, like in environment number two, uh, between themselves and the land that they belong to. Now, when the white Australians came to Australia, they, uh, like in other parts of the world, uh, separated them from, uh, from the land. They, they sent them to reserves and so on. And they yearn to go back there because they don't feel whole without it. So uh, this whole sense of belonging is very, very vividly described in the spirituality. What impressed me about Nada Lu's thing is that from the first few pages of there, she could take a concept, and I would talk more about that concept, and use it to articulate something she wanted to articulate about these aborigines who have a connection to their land 
that we don't understand very well or that we don't that we don't have that there is in some sense one system there the people and the land and and I thought yeah that's you know that's using that concept in a really interesting way she said to me you know when I was very young my uh, father always told us whenever we lose uh, contact with our spiritual selves whenever there is no water in the land on the land that the most important thing is to be respectful towards everything and everybody around you otherwise you lose contact with your spiritual spirit mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I I feel like there's two big things you 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 gave us. I'm going to take the bigger one first because I can't handle it. But if somebody else wants to, that's welcome. There's something in what you're saying with that, you know, about some symbolic way to do that. And then there is the real walkabouts. And then there is what your father said, that her father, that any respectful way of dealing with everything around you brings that contact to or the universe or whatever. And with the implication being, and this is how we connect those things, I think. Uh, with the implication being that the human organism has some sort of inherent connectedness, right? Yeah. Which you feel they lost and which you try to restore and then you used my concept. And so she did that. So what I wanted to do is invite you all to do that. So I'll ask you, is there anywhere in your thing that it might help you to play with this concept. You would, of course, change it, turn it around, do something else with it. The idea is not that it's my concept, but that it is a different kind of concept than you usually get. It's a concept of an interaction process where the interaction is first and the members of the interaction come later. You, you derive the people from the relationship. Do you know what I mean? It's a, it's a model that some family therapy uh, theories have. They say the family is the system that you work with. And uh, the person who comes to therapy is only the member in whom the disturbance manifests the most. Right? Now they have something similar there. They're thinking about an interaction as what they're working with instead of a thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That is a concept that's different than what you're used to. And that's my reason for introducing it. And saying, well, there you are. Here is an example of a different kind of model, a different kind of concept. So that rather than being this autistic individual who I really am, who has to struggle to relate, all of that remaining true in fact, there is something to say about how, the, theoretically I mean, for a theory which would start with a body that is an interaction, so that we can understand these Australians and it would be true what you're saying. You see what I'm, I'm doing theory, but there's something there that I think I think we want most people something about to be respectful to every part of the environment and all the people connects you to the universe or something let's say this is how we this is what we are to begin with theoretically then we don't have to explain that that's an interaction that's ongoing and we have to explain how it gets interrupted or something. Mm -hmm. But theoretically, it would, there's some advantage. And that's, in fact, what happens when you shift models. Uh, you, you have no problem with the thing you're trying to explain, but you get a bunch of other problems that most people don't have. 
like how come we're like the way we are <laughs> you see what I mean uh, there are the kinds of things that therapists try to explain the kinds of things that spiritual people try to explain all uh, get some advantage from this kind of model uh, you're already growing out of the universe I think like a plant and uh, if you get down to a deeper level that becomes obvious down there and so then it's not quite so mysterious that things come in the process like we say but there's some advantage to taking the interaction first